In this video, we're going to take a look at how to tell if what you're feeling when you're doing a stretch, something like a forward fold, is actually hamstring tightness or is it nerve tension. This is really useful to know because if you are someone like me and what you're actually feeling is nerve tension and not the muscle stretch, you should actually be stretching a little bit differently. So if you're someone who's been doing a lot of forward folds and trying to work on your tight hamstring flexibility for a long time and aren't seeing any progress with your current way of stretching, this is going to be a really good video for you. We're going to start off talking a little bit about the difference between muscles and nerves and how they behave differently when we're trying to stretch. We're going to talk about the sciatic nerve, real brief overview of its anatomy, just enough so that you know what to do. And then we'll do a real quick test to see, do you have a little bit of tension in your sciatic nerve? And then we can talk about what to do with that with your stretching. Our sciatic nerve runs from the very top of our skull, down our spinal cord, down the back side of our hip, down our leg, all the way under, around our heel, through the bottom of our foot, to our toes. This is another diagram that just shows that in a little bit more detail. It's extremely simplified. It does branch a couple of places along the way, but for all intents and purposes, understand that your sciatic nerve goes from your skull all the way to your toes. Next, let's talk about the differences between our nerves versus our muscles. So our muscles are pretty elastic. They're kind of like this TheraBand that I have here. They contract to do work, they lengthen to stretch. So when we're doing something like a forward fold, as that muscle is lengthening, that's typically what we feel as the sensation of a stretch. Muscles respond really well when being placed under tension and stretching, which is why we like to stretch to try to lengthen them and increase our flexibility. Nerves, however, are inelastic. They're more like this iPhone charger that I have. Instead of stretching, they glide back and forth through the soft tissue of our body. So here, when I'm leaning forwards, my sciatic nerve is actually gliding through my leg. Nerve tension is what happens when there's something that's preventing our nerve from easily sliding back and forth. This is when the nerve gets tugged a little too hard, it can't move, and often this can lead to sensations of tingling in the extremities, feelings of hot and cold, potential pain and discomfort, or feelings of an intense. We can also put our nerves on tension by adjusting the position of our joints to tug a little bit more strongly on the nerve. In a forward fold, for example, flex, we're pulling it a little bit longer through the back of our hip and through our back, versus extending the hip, starting to lean back. Technically, this would be leaning back all the way to the floor, would be the least nerve tension. That adds a little slack to our hips. Similarly, straightening the knees adds a little bit more nerve tension. Bending the knees gives it a little bit more slack. Flexing the foot increases nerve tension. That's giving the nerve a tug towards our toes. Pointing the foot gives us a little more slack. And finally, rounding the back, rounding the neck, tucking our chin towards our chest, that gives us more nerve tension versus flattening our back gives us a little bit more slack. If we think about this specifically in a seated forward fold or a pike stretch, even just sitting there, you have a little bit of tension in your nerve to start with because our hip is flexed and our legs are straight. Lying down on your back with knees bent and toes pointed would probably be the least tense position that you could be in. But as we start to lean forwards, we're increasing the nerve tension. If we then flex our feet on top of that, we're gonna increase it even more. And then if you round your back and your neck, you're gonna increase that tension even further which is why lots of people get a little bit of back pain and some funky feelings when you're doing forward folds like this. It's actually the worst possible way that you can be stretching if you're someone who has nerve tension because you're pulling your nerve as tight as it can possibly go. Your nerve is going to react by increasing your muscle tone and trying to protect itself. Unlike muscles, nerves do not respond well to being placed under stress tension. Trying to stretch a nerve, which doesn't naturally want to stretch, it wants to slide back and forth, can actually make you more tight in the long run. So how do we know if the sensations we're feeling in something like a forward fold are from a productive muscle stretch in which we could continue to stretch to increase our flexibility, or an unproductive excessive tugging on a tense nerve, in which case we should back off and modify the stretch. Thankfully, there's some real simple tests we can do to see if what we're feeling in our legs is likely due to nerve tension or if it's likely just that normal muscle stretch. So for these, you can start in a seated pike stretch. So that is sitting on your butt or on a block or on the chair. We want our back to be nice and flat, legs straight, feet flexed. Go ahead and start to lean forwards, seeing where you can reach your hands on the floor or on your legs. Notice 
What sensations are you feeling in your body? Where are you feeling them? You feel them in your hamstrings, hopefully, but you also feel stuff in your calves, maybe the bottoms of your feet, any low back pain or any discomfort in your neck. Then point your toes, see, can you reach farther? And do any of those sensations change at all? If, when you point your feet, the sensations in your back or hamstrings get less intense or go away, remember, we haven't actually altered any of the muscles in our back or the back of our thighs when we're adjusting the position of our feet. So that's a good sign that what we're feeling is a little bit of nerve tension. You can even go ahead and point and flex your feet a couple times, see if those sensations come back and return. If, however, you felt a change in sensations or your calves or your feet, we did change the length of those muscles because we changed the position of our ankles. So we have to do one more test to see if what we're feeling is a muscle stretch or if it might be nerve related. So go back to your flat back pike with your feet flexed, finding those sensations back either in your calves or your feet. And notice does lifting your torso and lowering your torso change the sensation in your calves or feet. Remember, we're not actually doing anything to adjust the length of any of our calf or foot muscles when we do this. So if what we're feeling changes in our calves or our feet as we're hinging our hips, it's likely because we have a little bit of nerve tension as we hinge forwards, we're putting that nerve on a little bit more tension. As we lift our torso, we're putting that nerve on a little bit of slack. Another optional test you can do is doing a quick nerve glide on one leg and seeing if that changes any of the feelings you get before and after. And I'll put a link on how to do that in the description for this video. So if you find out that you have a little bit of nerve tension when you're doing some of these tests, things that you can do to modify your training accordingly because we know that if we have nerve tension, we don't want to try to stretch that nerve at our maximum all of the time. So the biggest thing you can do is avoid stretching in positions that would maximize or aggravate the tension that you have. So forward folds, like I showed, if you're doing this with your feet flexed, your legs totally straight, and you're rounding your back, that's pulling your nerve as tight as it can possibly go, and your nerve is probably going to be way tighter than what you're going to even be able to do before you feel a muscle stretch. So things you can do to modify your stretches to reduce nerve tension are things like pointing your feet, making sure your back stays nice and flat, slightly bending your knees. So we're working in positions where we can find that muscle stretch before we find any other surprising sensations like our calf tightness or that low back pain that indicate that we're finding that nerve tension in that position instead. You can also add some nerve mobilizations like nerve glides or tensioners to your warm up. I'll link to another video in the description of this that shows really easy ones you can do for those. It takes all of a minute, so really easy to incorporate if you're someone like me who has nerve tension and needs to do those. And finally, the long-term solution is working on your active flexibility at your end range of motion, so those positions where you would be normally feeling that nerve tension so that all of both of our big mover muscles, our hamstrings, and our hip flexors in the case of forward folds, as well as the smaller stabilizing muscles like our hip rotators in, our, in the back of our butt, in the back of our hips, are firing appropriately so that they can support that position and keep our nerves nice and happy. Hopefully this has been a helpful video and you've learned a thing or two, especially if you're like me and have some nerve tension. This is something that I wish I had known about much earlier in my training because it's really impacted how I do things where I'm stretching my hamstrings, whether it's forward folds or even things like splits, it made a huge difference in my own training. So hopefully it makes a difference for you as well.